Hey, I'll see you kids. You'll never believe it. I broke the record for donut eating. It was tough, but I stuck to my commitment and I reached my goal. I did it. Yes, 40 donuts. Here we go. Oh, oh my gosh. I need to go work out. Now that I finished with that goal, I think I like to commit to something more important and worthwhile. So, I just found out that everyone is making commitments around here and they forgot to give me the memo. But no worries, because I have already thought of what I want to do. Oh yeah, by the way, in case you don't know what commitment means. Commitment is making a plan and putting it into practice. I'm committing to learning how to play this keyboard. It shouldn't be too hard, right? I'll just watch some instructional YouTube videos to get started. Rob, what's happening right now? What are you doing? I'm committing to learning this keyboard. I just said that. Can you learn somewhere else? Like, I'm teaching the kids. So am I. I'm teaching them what commitment looks like. Come on. Actually, you know who loves music? Oh, who? Chris, you should totally tell him about your commitment. Oh, that's, that's a great idea. What? Well, speaking of commitments, today's lesson is actually inspired by a new commitment, and I'm hoping it inspires you too. Last week, we learned from Gabby's how important it is to read your Bible. So God's word is like a light that guides us when we don't know what to do. This week, we're going to talk through something else that will help us grow in our faith. What do I do with this? Oh, hey, Rob. Oh, sorry, hey, I completely forgot to, <laughs> to, to take this with me. All right, take it with you. Oh, okay. Goodbye. Since I'm always doing scholarly activities, I decided to push myself and commit to something way outside my comfort zone. <laughs> Exercise? <laughs> I'm gonna train and push myself and work really hard until I can fully do five push-ups. Okay, I know it doesn't sound like a lot to you, but for me, it's a lot, because currently, I can do zero. When Jesus was living here on this earth, there was something that he would do constantly. He would go off to be alone and then he would pray. Jesus knew how important it was to talk to his father. It's important for us as well. We can go to our heavenly father and tell him about everything. Hey, Michael. I hey. couldn't find Chris, but do you want to see what I learned so far? Uh, sure. I mean, I don't have much choice. You've taken over this whole desk with that thing. Oh, glad you see it my way, bud. Awesome. <sighs> what? Yes, any day? I'm doing it. What do you mean you're doing it? Hey, Rob, I don't... Rob, I don't hear anything. No, it's not about hearing, it's about seeing. It's finger placement. Finger placement? Yeah! Before you actually start playing any keys, you gotta put your hands on the right keys. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's very... Rob, are you, are you saying that all this time you've learned how to put your hands on the keys? Well, well yeah, the, the first video is learning where to put your hands and, and the next I actually get to start playing some scales. Okay, well, I can't wait to hear it. Really? Really? Like, you, you hear it? All right, I'll, I'll be back soon then, okay? Okay. Okay, training sesh number one. So this push-up professional on the internet said that to build up your strength for a push-up, you should do a plank and hold it for a minute. So then I went on the internet and I researched what a plank is. And now I know. So here goes. Let me set my timer. And a minute. Sometimes we may want to pray, but we don't really know what to say or how to get started. And that's okay. We weren't born knowing how to tie our shoes, but with practice, we all eventually learn. It's the same with prayer. If you practice, you'll get better and better at talking to God. And the cool thing is that in the Bible, Jesus teaches us how to pray. Who invented this torture? My arms are shaking and burning. You know, reading books never causes this kind of pain. Do people actually do this exercise thing for fun? One day, Jesus went up a mountainside to teach a crowd of people. And here's what he said. 
This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Oh my goodness, are you teaching the kids, the CF kids about the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, I actually was. That's so beautiful. It's inspiring me to play some music. Listen. Mm, oh, ah, Rob, 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 please, please. Ah, that's horrible. I thought you were practicing. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Man, maybe my finger placement is off. Maybe. Man, no, it's a lot harder than I expected. But you know what? With some practice and commitment, I've got this. Plus, I'm learning so many fun facts. In fact, did you know that there are 18 million non-professional piano players in the United States? Soon to be 18 million and one. I'll be back. Crazy. God bless. Back to commitment that won't hurt my ears or yours. This prayer is known as the Lord's Prayer. You can follow the example Jesus gave us in the Lord's Prayer. Or you can simply talk to God about how you feel about things that are happening in your life. God is always there to hear every word. Here, watch this video before Rob comes back. During Jesus' time on earth, he prayed a lot. He knew that prayer would keep him close to God, his Father. Sometimes Jesus would pray with others, like when he asked Peter, James, and John to come with him to a mountain to pray. Other times, Jesus would leave his disciples and pray by himself, so he would have time alone with his Father. When Jesus prayed, he prayed for all sorts of things. He prayed for his disciples, for those in need of healing, and for little children. Jesus even prayed for us and asked his Father to watch over us. That's right, Jesus prayed for you and for me. Through Jesus' prayers, we can learn how to pray too. Jesus used the Lord's Prayer to teach his disciples to pray. It wasn't long and fancy. He showed them that they could pray in a simple way about many different things. Our prayers can be the same way. Jesus also taught us that we should pray without giving up. God is always listening to what we say. The way He answers our prayers might be different from what we expect, but we can always trust His plan for us. So the next time you're happy or sad, or worried or angry, or just need help, Talk to God about it. He listened to his son's prayers, and he'll listen to yours too. Okay, I soaked my arms in an ice bath for 20 minutes to allow for proper muscle recovery. And now I'm moving on to the next form of torture. I mean training! <laughs> next on the list, push-ups, but from an elevated surface. Here goes. This looks elevated. And oh, one, two. Prayer is a great way that you can grow in your faith. That's why Jesus took time to help his followers understand how to pray. If you are a Jesus follower, then this bottom line is for you. Practice praying to God. Every day, set aside time to talk to God. He is waiting and wanting to hear from you. Make the commitment and stick with it. Well, it's the moment of truth. So the push-up professional online said in the article that I should put a broom on my back to ensure that I'm using the proper form. So here goes. Oh, I'm so nervous. Okay, and here's the broom. And... Ready? The broom fell, I must not be in proper form. Okay, 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 don't get defeated. You committed? Here we go. Oh my goodness, that burns! <clears throat> see if kids, did you see that? I almost did it! I almost did a whole push-up. I bet my arms all the way down. Now I just have to push them back up, but I'm like 90% there, so I'm pretty much like the strongest person in the world. You know, all I have to do is keep training, and boom, I'm gonna hit my goal of five in no time. And then after that, I'll hit a goal of 50, and then like 500, oh my gosh, and then look out, I'm gonna be the push-up master champion. <sighs> and the thing is, that was really hard work. 
and it made my muscles hurt a lot. But the results are gonna make the commitment so worth it. Okay, I've mastered my scales. You gotta check this out. All right. Oh, Rob, that's not bad at all. Right? And it, all it took was some practice. And commitment. You know, if you learn guitar, we can start a band. We can call ourselves the Disciple Makers. Oh, snap. Rob, I like the sound of that. Our that was fishes, a horrible handshake. Or fishes and loaves. They, <laughs> what is up with a handshake? <laughs> fishes and loaves? I like the sound of that, though. Yeah. Disciple, disciple Makers? Yeah. Disciple or fish and loaves.
It's week two of our May Commitment series. We want you to commit to growing closer to God. That's why each week we will give you a new challenge that will help you in your commitment. Last week, we asked you to read your Bible. This week, your challenge is to pray. That's right, we want you to pray. You can pray in your house, you can pray with a mouse. Mm, maybe not. Write down your prayer on the back of the week two challenge card and bring it back next week. If you do, you will get to... Ooh, let's try that again. Spin the wheel. Ooh, much better. Happy praying. <laughs>